Okay. Hey everybody. Okay, today's video is going to be to demonstrate some changes I've done to the AI. Uh, first of all, I did a little structure, a store. Uh, I should start at the beginning. Sorry, it's been a while. I didn't make a video. Okay, the AI now detect other cards, which I call opponents in the blueprint. And it does its best to avoid hitting them. So, you know, if it follows right behind, behind it, it'll deviate a little bit to avoid just ramming into it and pushing it, right? It'll move to the side so it can pass it. Okay? And if there's two cars one after the other, and they both want to reach the middle of the spline because that's their trajectory, well, they won't ram to each other, they'll keep a certain distance. And of course, if there's a car to the side and one up front, uh, that AI is going to break so it doesn't hit the one in front, and it's not going to steer to that side so it doesn't hit the other one. So it's going to avoid the car in front the other way so it doesn't hit any of the two cars, all right? So the way I did that is I made a little structure here that stores the actors that we find within a certain radius and at what distance and what angle they are. Okay, basically every car has 180 degree on each side. So the angle that I'm there or the on front, on the side and left or right. And I store that here. Now onto the blueprint. First of all, I made a detect opponents graph here. That basically, uh, yeah, before that, to be able to detect them, I made a sphere collision that's set to overlap only the vehicle. So it ignores everything but the vehicles. Then of course you can set the radius of that detection to be bigger if you want them to be predicting from a longer distance. And at big and play, I attach that sphere onto the vehicle mesh because the controller's route does not follow the vehicle. So you have to attach it to the mesh manually. Now that it's done, you can every tick or every timer time you want. You know, you can set a timer that happens 10 times a second. So instead of doing it every FPS, so let's say you're 60 FPS, this code executes 60 times a second. But you can put it on a timer to make it execute less often. And it won't affect the uh, accuracy, I think. But right now, I'm making it on a tick because I was uh, testing with it and not trying to make it optimized. <clears throat> and so yeah, you get the overlapping actors of this with the filter BP Master Vehicle. And then for each of them, you get the angle. So if there are more than, than 90 degrees to the side, the, the driver of the AI don't see them. Alright? So the AI is not responsible for whatever happens to the cars behind it, which is good. So you, whenever you made sure that they were in sight, you add them to the scene opponents here. And then with these, you detect which one is the closest to the car and which one is the most in front of the car. So which one has the smallest distance and which one has the smallest angle because the smallest distance is going to affect the steering and the smallest angle is going to affect the speed. And you'll see that in a minute. So handle steering angle. You can see here if there's no opponents, index zero is going to be invalid. And so you just set steering angle to the steering calculation. But if there is opponents, then 
we set steering angle to be the default steering calculation plus the avoidance offset. Okay, so avoidance offset is a lot of lerping, mapping range and all that. <laughs> so yeah, basically uh, it gets the closest car, detect what angle it is from the AI, you know, if it's more up the side, more up front, and use that as well as the, the distance between them to decide how much it should steer away from it. To avoid hitting it. So a lot of lerping, taking distance and angle into account to get the proper amount of steering at the right time. It's kind of kind of experimental still. And same for a calculation of the desired speed. Now instead of getting the closest, you get the one that's the most up the front. The one that has the smaller forward angle basically and you clamp the maximum speed to alert between maximum speed and the speed that this opponent is going at using again distance and angle blends alerts and so that avoids ramming into the vehicle that's in front of you even if you're avoiding ramming into the vehicle that are sideways to you. And that's it. That makes for a smartish AI that avoid getting stuck just pushing other vehicles around. And I'll show you what that gives right now. So I'm going to be controlling this car here. And you'll see the car behind me is going to avoid collision with me. So it's going to deviate from its trajectory, which is the center of the track, to avoid collision with me. <clears throat> As you can see, it's almost got, almost got to pass the other car too. And by the way, I, uh, I did some debug printing which you can deactivate which you kind of have to for a game but uh you can plug in into the graph to be able to see all these variables printed on the string on the screen sorry i'm gonna try to catch up Whew. Yeah, forget it. I'm not catching up. <laughs> okay, so next scenario I'm going to demonstrate is... The two AIs are side to side. So this vehicle here cannot avoid me. Alright. Because it would cause him to ram into the other AI. And so it'll just have to slow down so it doesn't hit my car and then avoid my car and happen to be behind the other AI because of that. So let's see how that works out. Oh, that's, that's pretty unexpected. <laughs> okay, so what happens is the left car was somehow faster and so it went in the middle first and the other car had to brake so it doesn't hit it. which is kind of cool i did not predict that i'll just make that car a little more forward to make sure that car is second and i'll show you that again <laughs> okay so you see damn they still managed to snuck in there both of them okay okay fine yeah because my track is pretty wide so now now it should exactly now you can see my speed calculation isn't 
perfect, so it still hit me because I wasn't moving. And that doesn't happen often in a racing game. But yeah, it ended up slowing down a lot, even though it hit me anyway. And then waited for the other car to be out of the way so it could steer around me. So that's cool. And so yeah, this is the little improvements I did to the AI. I also made the spline able to deform the landscapes so I could easily create those kind of natural walls around the, the racetrack to uh, cut the view distance. Now you see that in a lot of racing games. I'll sh just show you a picture of uh, Forza. You see here how the landscape is raised on one side and just has three on top of it, so you can't see any further. Well, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Same here. And that's a real life racetrack. So you see there's hills pretty much on each side of the track. In case, you know, one of the cars just goes above the fence, you know, the hill is going to stop it. It's also kind of safer, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I made my spline modify the landscape to replicate that. I'm going to put fences and, you know, foliage eventually. <laughs> but right now I just wanted to test the technicality of using the spline road to deform the landscape, which was pretty easy. All the functions are already in there. I just had to trigger them. It was... I, I should have thought about it sooner, but hey, never late. Better late than never, right? So as you can see, the landscape adapt to the road. So yeah, this is not quite finished, so I won't push the, an update yet just for that. But uh, yeah, I'll keep working on the AI, make it smarter, more aggressive, you know, for cars to be able to pass each other and make some really interesting race. Because now they kind of all go the same speed, you know, which is the maximum speed they can go without drifting. And it's kind of boring because they never pass each other. You know, much like in NASCAR. You know, you got a car that would love to pass the other one in front of him, but he's already going top speed he can go. So he can't go any faster to pass someone else, you know? He just has to wait for the other driver to make a mistake so he can pass it. But the AI never can make mistakes, so that never happens. <laughs> so I have to figure a way to make the AI more aggressive and, you know, go above the safe speed limit to pass other cars. Even if that means drifting a little bit and having to control that drift, you know. So, uh, yeah. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to uh, post them in the comment section. I'm always open to your suggestions. And that was it for this little video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time.